All right, welcome back, everybody. It's some more CVRE Echo Arena action. We're about to get started with St. Clair College versus UC Berkeley, which are, like was mentioned before, currently ranked number one and number two here for season three so far. I actually, well, technically they're both ranked at number one, so there's no number two spot. Or I guess because it's true, it's two even. and two, right? How yeah, bias, the bias. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> but watch out, guys. Yeah, one thing we have to uh, to take note of, though, um, in similar fashion to what happened during game number one of the season, UC Berkeley is playing with two players instead of three again. Again. Oh, so, so we had we do they do have technical difficulties from what I heard before the match started. So we're not going to see that third player in. And I don't know if it's confirmed that he might join in a little bit later or I he know won't. that's what happened last time. Like he came in like during the second half. And it looks like actually I better get back into this. We're going right into the game. So UC Berkeley, we do have Crazy Chicken Forty One and Nerd Burglar. Meanwhile on St. Clair we've got Mizuchi, the designated goaltender for the most part, black label and ZR glitch. Excited to see this game co come off, especially when you were talking up their 2v3 situation coming it's, in last it's year. It's strong. <laughs> so UC Berkeley going to want to start off hot because if they fall behind with that, that uh, man down, they're going to stay behind. It happens a lot in many games, so you don't want to see it come out in this one. Already, though, on the defense is UC Berkeley. I mean, I'm kind of surprised, like, they were doing as well as they were off the start because this is going to get rough for UC Berkeley because, yeah, 2v3, you can work around it. But what if you have an enforcer like ZR Glitch where 90% of the time he is looking to get a stun on you? Yeah, but UC Berkeley come off with a really nice shot, a little bit wide, but it hits, a, it comes back and it's picked up by, uh, by St. Clair and they try to dump it out. But at midfield, UC Berkeley takes advantage back into their zone and they're on the attack again but loose disc in the bottom of the field shot on oh. net hits it doesn't hit the post it's intercepted by the defenseman that is Mizuchi and he throws it right down into uh, Berkeley's side and it's just gonna sit there and wait for uh, Berkeley to come get it their uh, 2v3 situation is already looking very good they have not let it in a single point yeah, when you're forcing Mizuchi to make some clutch plays to keep that disc from missing the goal, like, you're pretty solid if you're doing this 2v3. Stun comes off at midfield, and as the ball's dumped into Berkeley's side, St. Clair with possession on the offense. There shot off, and that's a three-pointer to start off the game. St. Clair up 3 nothing. Glitch with an excellent shot from the bottom of the map. Right place, right time there. Just sitting at the bottom of the arena. Disc comes to him, and he had himself a clear spot. That's, the, I guess, one of the main problems of a 2v3, of course, is you more than likely will have to sacrifice a goalie. And it kind of leaves those long, those long drives, those long shots open. Because just trying to be offensive or put pressure on with one person is probably a little, a little difficult. But to stall off for two minutes without letting a single point in. That's with crazy. A player down. That is already really good showing for UC Berkeley. And as we see the just advantage going into their zone, um, going to start off with Nerd Burglar holding onto the disc, coasting a little bit downfield. And he's going to take it right past two defenders, actually. And we see uh, it's a 2v1 situation. Open net, actually, right now. Nope, Mizuchi's there. Oh, he was just below it. Yeah. Just a little bit of uh, hard to see in the uh, the colors. But we're going to see them juke it out in the bottom. He's trying to get a stun off, actually. So he's going to be on a 1v3 situation. He was using his teammate as a meat shield during that entire time, just making the teammate take all of the stuns. Just and dancing. slowly but surely finding his opportunity, looking for it versus Mizuchi. But Mizuchi going to get a piece of that, and it's gone. I don't know if you noticed that, but he actually tried to throw it. Like, he faked it around the back. and Oh, that would have been some next level stuff. Yeah, and it's going to be dumped off in the Berkeley side. That bounced, side. though. Oh, my. That could have been. No! Slam dunk by Glitch. Got I thought that was going to go in off the back wall, but it didn't. And it, it doesn't even matter because it's picked up in his own zone, and he just dunks it in for the two point. That's 5 nothing for St. Clair College. That tripped me up for a second. I, w I was screaming no because I thought uh, that was an own goal. That was my bad. I didn't realize which side of the map we were on. Let's it's go. It's okay. It was, their, uh, it was just their third player coming into play. You didn't see it. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, it's one of those days, but it's still an extremely close game with five minutes left in the first half here. ZR glitch coming out strong right away with all five points for St. Clair College. <laughs> I feel silly now, but <laughs> here we go. Out of the catapults. Joust advantage in Berkeley's favor, and it's going to be Nerd Burglar holding on to it in his own zone. He's going to coast a little bit down, trying to juke out that, that uh, one attacker coming from St. Clair College. <laughs> nice and block. it's done off by his teammate. So it's going to be a 2v2 situation for a short couple seconds. Almost like an American football where you'll have the, the ball carrier and everyone else is just trying to uh, block for him. Kind of this play that UC Berkeley is trying to make at the moment. Nerd Burglar now with the disc, just trying to find his way around the defense of St. Clair College. It's really, really funny seeing them dance around on the bottom, kind of juking each other out. And the stun's just coming off from every team. And he's in a good position oh. to shoot, but he lets go of the disc. Hey, I don't know if someone was able to smack it out of his hand or what, but right at the critical moment where he needed that shot to come out, it just did not. And Zier Glitch is going to be able to cross this thing past the midfield, but and it gets intercepted or stolen, actually. Yeah. Nerd Burglar, making the name proud. Considering they're down two to three in player advantage, so they're just keep stealing it right out of their zone. No goalie in net, so open net shot goes wide for St. Clair College, and it's picked up by Nerd Burglar in his own zone, but he gets stunned, and it's a loose disc right now. Open net too, and it's, but it's gonna coast past everybody, and nobody's gonna get advantage, so both teams gonna be in prime advantage to contest each other. Yeah, St. Clair seemed like they were at a bit of a mis miscommunication there. That disc was left free for an absurd amount of time. But now it's going to be Zier Glitch in the corner of the offensive zone. Gets around the one member, takes the shot off the ground, actually. Tried to get it to his teammate, but it's going to be blocked by Nerd Burglar as he picks up the disc in his own zone. And as they're going to jousting it out on the bottom, battling it out to see who can come out with on top, and St. Clair College holding it in possession on the, the zone. Shot. Goes for the shot, but it's a little bit wide. And just barely missing its mark, but that disc is going to travel all the way down after that shot into the St. Clair College zone. And is that Nurburger coming in hot there? He, one of them is chasing it down, and in fact, Crazy Chicken able to get the disc in the St. Clair zone. And again, just slowly but surely, Juking him around, actually. Some nice movement coming out. In really from good Berkeley. opportunity to take a shot. He's going to try to juke out Jukes. the teammate. And he gets the juke. And you see Berkeley putting themselves on the board for a two to five differential. That was actually perfect. Waited for the moment that Mizuchi committed and just put it right in that right hand side. There was nothing that Mizuchi could have really done right there. Kind of like how you see a soccer goalie kind of have to pre jump before the shot actually happens. That's essentially what happened right there and it did not go into Mizuchi's favor. Nice shot for UC Berkeley. Excellent teamwork coming out for UC Berkeley to put themselves on the board with a man down too, we can't forget. So that is insane that they're able to do that. We had Miami not even score, like not even get past four goals with three players on the other team. So for to do it with two players, that's, that's already showing the, uh, the caliber of play that they're willing to bring. Oh yeah, Berkeley is they're definitely something else, something impressive. And now, right now, St. Clair bringing it into the offensive zone. Now as we're ticking down, we're at the two minute and 20 second mark of the match. And it's a very, very close game considering the time that's passed. Sierra Glitch again, just being the enforcer and then the shooter when necessary, but he is gonna get stunned up. I believe that was by Crazy Chicken. And Nerdberg, we're going to try his best to get this thing cleared and possibly get themselves some uh, some offense going here. Just taking his time, using the objects of the arena, actually, to his advantage, like additional meat shields of sorts. Does try to make it to the midfield and is met by Black Label. Was able to stun him up. Zero glitch going the other way. That shot is not on target. And... You see Berkeley coming in with stuns on Zero Glitch for days. Taking two of them, and they are going to be able to get the disc first, I think. The stun off for UC Berkeley. They just keep on slapping around, making sure that St. Clair can't keep the possession in their zone. Very, very good offense for UC Berkeley in their own zone. I mean, the worst possible like situation UC Berkeley could put themselves in is allowing St. Clair to play like a good passing game. 
So by constantly shutting down the pass roads, essentially, they're keeping this in close quarters and their chances are much better if they're able to keep this in like stun distance, like close battles rather than spread out. And as you talk about, they're shutting down the passing routes. They're not even letting them pass at all. So they're just eliminating the passing route from the start. They're not, the ball or the disc, sorry, not even leaving St. Clair's hands before it can be intercepted by Berkeley. We've seen this time and time again in Nerd Burger with the Jukes of Legend make <laughs> the equivalent of breaking the ankles of the St. Clair, uh, Saint Clair what, squad. What in would the mid, be the uh, the equivalent of breaking a zero gravity ankle? Wait, is that like is that just breaking gravity, or is it just would that still be breaking ankles? And actually shot well, off let's go. by UC Berkeley, and they get another uh, two pointer off. So that brings them down to a four to five game. Gosh. That's insanely close considering they're down two players. As I'll say it time and time again, UC Berkeley looking so good with two players. And if I remember from the uh, the last game that they had played that was broadcasted during week one, even when their third player came out, like it didn't feel like anything changed. It was just nothing but pressure except, hey, now they actually have a defenseman. And it's just crazy to see how much damage UC Berkeley is able to do down them down a person in this uh, in this match but St. Clair still with the lead so even though St. Clair has the lead it looks like they're falling behind a little bit in terms of the play like the score doesn't change because they are at a man advantage and actually they go to get the shot off but they kind of clear it into Berkeley zone five seconds left in the game it's just going to coast off and the time's going to tick down I'm kind of curious there because the uh Blue side didn't look like they had moved. I think only Crazy Chicken was actually on the field. So I think uh, Nerdburger might have disconnected, but of all times to do it, might as well have it happen during halftime. So 5-4 going into the half. St. Clair barely hanging on with that lead, Consi even considering the, the man advantage of sorts. Well, looking at the last game, at the halftime, it was 35 nothing. So for it to be 5-4 to four at half with only two players on one team, that that's pretty crazy to see. And the um, I'm sure that the stats really show at how much uh, Nerd Burglar and Crazy Chicken are getting those stuns off to make sure that the passing doesn't come out of St. Clair. I know the last time I had saw like, Nerd Burglar by himself had it seven or eight stuns so he's just been on an absolute tear just being both of these guys being enforcers for themselves like meanwhile like st Clair, you when you think of an enforcer you look to zr glitch where he's usually the one who's interfering with the guy out front being the blocker of sorts you see berkeley both players do that so it's like how do you get through this normally the answer would be passing but so far berkeley has just been able to shut down all the passing routes, all the playmaking potential. Who needs a third player when you just when they can't the other team can't even get a shot off? Let's be mm -hmm. let's be honest. Yeah, if you're doing enough harassment with two players, then yeah, the third person, like as nice as it would be, is not making that big of a difference, it seems. But we're going to uh take a look real quick actually into the game it does appear that there was a disconnect from one of the players i do think that was a nerd burglar who had dc'd right at the last 20 seconds of that match now we are giving them props about being able to do a 2v3 but i really hope nerd burglar gets uh gets back into it otherwise I don't know what you're going to do with the 1v3. <laughs> well, Crazy Chicken, you know, he's just going to have to get up in each player's face. He's going to have to have, like, three arms smacking around each player on uh, St. Clair because if he can't do that on his own, that essentially is uh, uh, St. Clair's going to run away with this match if it's a one-on-three. I, I don't, like, two two players is a stretch, and they're managing to do it with two players. And I, I just I can't see them doing it with one player. So Yeah, if that ends up happening, Zero Glitch is literally just going to go hit hunting, and it's... The guy's not going to be able to move. So let's hope that isn't exactly the case. It does look like he has reconnected. So good news here for UC Berkeley. And good news for us because it means this match is going to continue to be neck and neck. 
between, of course, the, the tide for first teams, with both of them sitting at 2 and 0. Oh. And that um that third player for uh, UC Berkeley, I don't know if we've we haven't heard any uh, news about him joining the server yet. Still having some technical difficulties, not able to join in. I've not seen anything in the Discord regarding him coming back, so they very well might be just going to uh, take the two v three all the way. Which of course again, this score at the top says zero zero, but it is actually still five four currently for Saint Clair. So extremely close game. Just as I say that, the adjustment is made. There it is. And I going into this, we're still in training. Sorry, I thought the match was starting. I was I was confused for a second, but we're, they're still. You got catapult baited too. Uh, yeah, I got <laughs> yes, catapult baited. It's not just me now. <laughs> so both teams just gonna looks like they're just hanging out, chatting with each other. Yeah, everyone's in there. Everyone's moving. So at least we know everybody's connected, all fine, good to go as we get ready to start this next half. Should be within another minute or two. Is there anything that you've noticed from either side that could possibly be something that gets worked on or like anything obvious? I know I'm having a hard time trying to spot out what exactly like anybody can adjust. I know during the our first match of the night, I was able to... I had a couple opinions, but not so much this time. <laughs> well, like the first game, there was a lot of mistakes that you could visibly see that you know, were just able to pick them out here and there. But I've actually been noticing that that whole positioning with St. Clair, they're able to just get shut down by the two players. Like they need to work on spreading themselves out into a position where they don't get, uh, where they don't, where they're not able to get stunned, where they're able to um, spread out and thin the defense of Berkeley. And get the uh, get the possession of the ball into the opposing team's zone, and it doesn't seem like they're uh, they're doing a good job considering they're up a whole player. You know, it should be, it should be um, a little bit more one sided with one player, but they're not showing that they can spread out that thin defense of two players and get the disc into the opposing net. So I that's what I want to see going into the next round is Saint Clair take advantage that they're a man up thin the defense of uh, Berkeley and uh, essentially just run away with this game. But at the same time, Berkeley is just doing such a good job at making sure that doesn't happen. It's hard to even tell if that's a mistake or if that's just Berkeley playing out of their mind. Mm. Okay. Of course, these guys would switch which position they were actually in, so a brief of adjustment. But we are going to be another minute. I think they are just in process of getting readied up. I see St. Clair is already ready, good to go for this next half. Just awaiting UC Berkeley. And as we go into uh, the second half of this game, Berkeley's still going to be down one man and. I hope to see that they can still keep it close with one uh, with that one man differential. I don't want to see uh, I, I don't want to see them give up on what they've worked so hard to keep close. What I think what's we're probably going to see this game more than likely is going to end with a a one or two goal gap. I think. Now, as for which side, I have no idea. I'd be extremely surprised to see if all of a sudden we get a reverse blowout from either side here. Like just where one team takes control. But now, looks like both sides are ready. We are about to get in the, the game, get into the catapults. Let's see how this one ends up. Not to be mistaken at that halftime, we're not getting baited by this catapult. This is actually, we're heading into the second half. UC Berkeley and St. Clair College, 5-4. Let's get into it. When I get the thumbs up from the production squad, you know it's for real. And here they go, coming out swinging once again in Nerdburger charging down but Mizuchi is there in the background if necessary again taking his time crazy chicken on meat shield duty once again just being the perfect blocker and their burger able to maneuver himself around here he might be able to find himself a shot Mizuchi what coming through the net with the save beautifully done I actually thought it was gonna skip past him I didn't know if his uh, player model was all the way through the net or if it would glitch into their uh, their zone but Really good. I, that was Did a that guy get stuck? <laughs> I, it, that was a really, really weird situation. But UC Berkeley coming out strong quickly. I think that was 
it's not even a minute into the the match and they've already taken the lead six to five how to stop a 2v3 put one of their players through the arena and keep them stuck there yeah that, that'd be one way to do it you see is that the equivalent of putting them through the glass kind of <laughs> you see berkeley playing a little bit of whack-a-mole as you can see like keeping them down there no, oh, that's good, though. They're doing exactly what they need to do, and they've gotten themselves their first lead here in this game at the very beginning of the second half. So looking good. St. Clair launches out. Let's see what kind of plan they have in store for UC Berkeley because they know that they're not going to necessarily charge, but they're going to be looking for the aggression. And sure enough, as soon as that, that disc gets launched, there's some UC Berkeley member right there with the stun. Oh, both just players each other. stunning each other in that situation. UC Berkeley in possession of the ball. A good launch down. St. Clair going to answer real quick. Their defenseman, Mizuchi, actually putting them back into the lead 8-6. to six. That was a little unexpected. I didn't, or I didn't realize that Mizuchi had dove forward like that. Because normally, most of this game, he's been sitting there in the net. But I guess because of the, the joust advantage. He was willing to get a little bit more aggressive off the start and was still hovering around that midfield to be able to dive in, get that, that long shot three-pointer. So one situation that you might see the players are able to put themselves in, you can't, you're not always going to just stun the other player. That player might swing back and you might stun each other. So taking each other out of the game might put your own team at a disadvantage. Yeah, we had saw that earlier with uh, where uh, Crazy Chicken traded with somebody and they were both kind of just hovering there in the middle of the UC Berkeley zone and that goal I think happened shortly Here after Nerd Nerd Berkeley on the offense Dukes, jukes it past uh, the St. Clair College defender but I don't somebody know. got a hand on that yeah I don't understand I thought he was going to get the shot off but it looked like the <laughs> shot went backwards and ZR glitch of course because uh, UC Berkeley went heavy into that because they almost got the goal of course the 2v3 Biting them really hard right now. Yep. Nobody in net. You can already see St. Clair changing up their uh, their positioning in this match, keeping it a two-on-two -two in their own zone, and one player kind of cherry-picking it out. So all they have to do is dump it out, and that's an open net opportunity for their player. All right, so two relatively quick goals here for St. Clair. Going to make things difficult for UC Berkeley, but if we know anything watching this, this 2v3 so far, <laughs> like the members mean nothing. They're gonna keep on, keep on trying here. Four goal or a four score difference is very minimal. And you see, really jerking around that midfield position, taking it into Saint Clair's zone. Nerd Burglar holding on to it, not letting Saint Clair get a single piece of that action. And he gets a shot opportunity. Oh He's gonna take the goodness. shot, and they get it off. That's eight to 10 for UC Berkeley, bringing them back to a two goal differential. This style that UC Berkeley is using is strictly abusing, like, well not necessarily abusing, but it's really pushing on the fact that if you're like, it's testing their experience, testing their movements, because anyone who, if they go up against somebody who's obviously like super experienced in this, they're gonna be able to move around and keep up with him. But anybody who might be just a little bit behind is getting lost in the shuffle and it seems like right now, if uh, if Nerdburger is going up one on one versus either ZR Glitch or Black Label, he's been able to get around them. Mizuchi, it seems like it's been a bit of a 50 50 if he can get around him or not. So, like, interesting that he's able to get the jukes out. Open that opportunity for St. Clair. Actually, actually I think uh, one player is actually back on defense for Berkeley. Oh, yeah, Nerdburger is in the goal right now. And ZR Glitch is going to take his time. He does see. Crazy Chicken chasing him down. Or no, that's actually Nurburger going after him now. Juking around on the bottom, taking Berkeley's style of play. Trying to see if he can get around their defense. Yeah, but this is the problem. Look, Nurburger has not like committed. It is going to force the pass out, which luckily that's exactly what St. Clair needs to do with Crazy Chicken one and Nets. One and situation. There it is. St. Clair College goes up 12-8 to eight in, this situ in this game. Now that's exactly what St. Clair needed to do. They spread out a bit, but at a good angle to the point where their pass couldn't get intercepted. And, of course, that's where the lack of numbers in this 2v3 is really going to hit you hard because you can't cover anywhere near as much as you need to That's to, exactly. 2v3. It's exactly what I wanted to see from them. They, they took the disc and they baited the player out, thinning the defense, 
throws it back right in front of the net into a one on, I think it was actually a two on one situation. So there was the rebound opportunity, even if he missed. Mm -hmm. All right, Nerd Burger going high and again, just trying to get around Black Label. And it looks like he might be able to get it done. He does sneak by once his teammates there to help. Squeaks by another. It's just one on one him and Mizuchi, unless one of the defenders can come back. And sure enough, he's going to take his time. So everyone does get into position. He's trying to find his opportunity, but ZR Glitch is actually going to be the one with the stun and the steal, saying that all the way back, a good clear. And in fact, that's kind of kind of dangerous. That thing keeps keeps on bouncing. Hmm. And we may not have been able to see it, but I've heard like three stuns happen in the midfield as they were trying to get back to that disc. But Nerdburger going to be able to get there first. Now again, just taking his time up high. He does manage to get around ZR Glitch. He's going to look for Black Label as well, but stun does come out. That's a free disc up in the high side. And it is going to go over to Mizuchi. He's getting a little aggressive. He found his opportunity, Whoa, but banks shot it off the off, post. Shot off the post. All, Sinclair almost putting in that long shot three-pointer, but it's just barely missing. Here he goes. Another opportunity. Putting the shot oh. off, and he gets the goal. 14-8 to eight for St. Clair College. And they're starting to run away with this game. I don't know. It's still close, but yes, they got a bunch of goals on the board. Mizuchi, like the silent assassin of sorts. Like, oh, I'm just a goaltender. You don't have to worry about me. Until he finds his opportunity to strike, launches himself in there, banks one off the post, and I think shortly after was able to bring it in for the goal, getting the two-pointer. Nicely done. You can call him a goaltender all you want, but he has half the points that St. Clair is, has on the board, and it looks like he's just showing that he can be an offensive player too. Hey, to bring it back to hockey, half the time some of the best goal scorers are defensemen. True. They got the skills, they got the power, and right now, ZR Glitch getting the stun off actually just completely was that, stiff arming. Yeah, him. was that a stiff arm stun? <laughs> that An was open actually net really for nice. St. Clair, and he just shoots it wide. Yeah, the stiff arm stun, but I think he did end up trading with it, so that disc does get lost, and it is going to be Nerd Burkler with it currently. Just going to try and get this thing cleared out. Bit of an odd bounce though. Gonna bring it back into their zone. That is ZR glitch again with the disc. Takes the shot from deep and finds the top of it. What, nice shot. What Actually, a shot coming off from ZR glitch to give him that. That uh, I'm sorry. a liar. That was Mizuchi. I got baited by the, the over overlay being off, but yeah, Mizuchi with the big shot from all the way down there. Very nice. Saint Clair up 17 to eight with three minutes and 30 seconds left in this game, in the match, actually. So St. Clair showing that, hey, you guys have two players. That's no problem. We'll, we'll just take care of you. Real, We just had to, you know, feel you out the first half. The adjustments they've made since half have been critical into how they're getting so many more goals, whether it's Mizuchi coming out of the net to force more three-on-twos or just finding his opportunities or just the rest of the squad, too, being able to slow him down. Like, Nerdburger, again, going to find himself in a bit of a breakout. Just, again, just trying to get away from Zero Glitch and Black Label. So far, relatively successful. Crazy Chicken there on the assist as well. Enforcer roll, trying to keep Nerdburger safe. That was a good stun. Can he find some offense with it? Slowly but surely creeping his way up. And here we go. He's going for the shot, and he shoots it a little bit wide. I'm curious to see how much possession time uh, Crazy Chicken has with the, uh, the ball. Looks like mo he's like they're mostly playing uh, an uh, enforcer role, like you say. So mm -hmm. I don't think I've actually seen him hold on to the, the disc. Yeah, it's been, for the most part, like I'm guessing at least 80% towards Nerd Burglar with Crazy Chicken like maybe getting a touch or two. Shot off by Nerd Burglar going a little bit wide. Not getting off, you know, getting a little bit desperate with their shots, it looks like. Did he just throw the disc as well as get the stun? I think I think so. Two birds, one stun. And here we go. ZR glitch with an uh, two-on-one situation, it looks like. or Yeah, 1v2. Yeah, if I were him, I'd definitely wait for my teammates to come back here. And Black Label is there as well. That's a loose disc, though. Who's going to chase it down? Nerdburger going to barely get it for now. And taken away, though. Just brawling for this thing in the corner. Another loose disc going into UC Berkeley's possession. 
and they go to clear it out, but it's an odd bounce back into the bottom of their zone. And ZR Glitch just going to hold on to it, trying to milk the time, it looks like. But loose ball passed up to Mizuchi. Mizuchi's going to glide, glide it right in, and that's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Took and his time a bit, though. It gave UC Berkeley some time to regroup. Goes for the pass to Black Label, shoots it in. But now we're in possession of and they're going to go for the shot from below. Glitch. Oh, it's going to cross the crease. Is someone going to finish this thing? Another Mizuchi gets stunned. Stun off. That stun was absolutely clutch stun, from UC Berkeley. Stun central in front of UC Berkeley's net, and nobody gets the shot off. He was literally slam dunk distance and was completely denied. Beautifully done. And now Nerd Burglar on the offense. I don't think there's any goaltender there to stop him. No bank shot, though. He's going to have to chase this one down if he wants to continue this offense. It looked like he had a little bit more time to hold on to it, getting a little bit, uh, I don't want to say, but panicking. But as we're dropping down into the 45 min second mark, not minute, uh, we're going to see mm -hmm. St. Clair up 17-8 to eight in prime position to take this match. Yeah, crunch time is now, and this slow style of juking is actually going to hurt them in the long run. Because, of course, St. Clair, they don't have to score anymore. They just care if you're shooting or not. So with 30 seconds left on the clock, they need to get themselves at <laughs> quite a few points. And it looks like Nerdburger going to move up. He's looking for a dunk, maybe. Goes for the shot, and he get gets him. the dunk off. Bounce shot in. And that's 17 to 10 for St. Clair College with 17 seconds left in this match. I think it's safe to say that St. Clair College is going to come off on top with this. But let's see if uh, Berkeley can kind of thin out that advantage. Berkeley would have to basically blitz this. They would need two three-pointers and then just some sort of other goal to at least like make the pass if St. Clair doesn't get any sort of offense in. Although and that's a lot to ask for with 20 seconds left. It's a lot to ask for when if you score that the other team's going to have to joust advantage. Oh, so they just hold be, on to it, right? Yeah, they can just hold on to it in their own zone. Yeah, in fact, even right now, and sure enough, it is going to be Crazy Chicken going in for the blitz, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be Black Label carrying this thing up, probably just trying to kill as much time as possible. Goes. See if he can snag himself another point on the board. And that is going to be it. St. Clair College going to be successful, taking care of that uh, 3v2 advantage. And they're going to take it 17 to 10 in our game today. A lot closer than our first match that we got to see, but St. Clair College taking out UC Berkeley to take that number one spot, showing how dominant they can be. In a, I guess, well, you can be as dominant as you want when you're in a 2v3 situation. Berkeley showing their strengths when they're a man down even. I want to, I can't wait to see both of these teams match up when it's an even strength three on three game. Yeah, I definitely do hope that, like, in these later weeks that their third player does, like, figure out what exactly it is that's the problem because you see Berkeley being so good as they are by just getting, like, the unfortunate, like, just never able to play on third strength or on full strength games. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going to hurt them in these uh, higher rated matches. You could probably still see them take care of um, some of the, the lower seeded ones so far. But that being said, even, even still, if, like, say Miami or w one of these other teams near the, the bottom at the moment, if they have a good passing game, they can easily still give like UC Berkeley a, a massive run for their money, if not take it, just by taking care of that man-up advantage. So I hope UC Berkeley is able to get that third uh, player situation figured out real soon. I 100% agree. If UC Berkeley can't take care of this, situ this uh, connection issue, and if they're down two on three for every match that they play, that could hurt them in the long run. They mm. might fall down in the standings they're not always going to be able to make these 2v3 runs all the time. So I hope they can figure out this uh, this connection issue because they are such a strong team. I would hate to see them fall in the standings. Now up next, our final match of the evening is going to be Baylor University versus Clemson University. And if I recall correctly, I'm actually going to quickly reference our standings of course these standings are from prior to tonight's matches and Baylor is sitting at 0-2 and, and we didn't quite get the update from the Miami Clemson match that happens off stream earlier today so depending on how 
Clemson Miami went. These are two teams that are like fighting t- to try and get into the middle, like try and get into that fourth or even fight for that third spot. And especially since with uh, with Texas Tech with their victory earlier today, these teams will have to start pushing now if they want to try and fight for that third spot. So after right now, we can confirm that St. Clair College is in that number one spot with a three nothing. Uh, scoreline mm-hmm. berkeley tied with texas tech at a two to one situation baylor uh miami confirmed down at oh and one we don't know how that match with clemson did go so we don't know where exactly they might fall in the standings hopefully uh we can see a very strong match coming in between baylor and clemson yeah so as we await our next match we'll be going to a very very quick break but just before we get moving here do you have any final thoughts for the berkeley st Clair match you know i really liked what i saw from st Clair. they're taking that time to spread out the defense of those two players they're not letting the two players get in their face as much they're waiting till that one overextends and then they're passing it into that 2v1 situation it's really good to see them change their play style to um to take advantage of that 2v3 situation But on top of that, really nice to see that Berkeley, no matter how many players they have, like they're down, if they're down two players, they can still hold on to that, um, that close game. They're not losing by too much. So if they get that third player, they might be able to climb up into that first place spot. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they'll definitely give St. Clair a run for the money. And I definitely hope that these two end up battling again sometime in the near future. But now we will take a very very brief break as we await our next matchup that should be happening taking about 10 minutes 10 15 i believe is the scheduled time for it which of course is going to be again baylor university versus clemson university both these teams hungry for a win we'll see who gets to pull ahead very shortly stay tuned